Reading from John. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and, in fact, will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. Good evening and welcome to St. Andrew's Chapel. In the Gospel reading that Luke Blunden just read, we are presented with a rich series of images and sayings from Jesus. But I want to focus in to the very end of the passage where Jesus talks about prayer. He tells his disciples that he will do anything they ask in his name, claiming explicitly, if in my name you ask for anything, I will do it. Of course, as any struggling Christian like me will quickly admit, this doesn't happen as easily as it might sound. If it did, there would be hardly any room for doubt in the world. For example, if I were to say, in the name of Jesus, I command this lectern to become a Labrador puppy, and it were to happen, most of you would assume that Mr. Campbell and I had pulled some tricks with video editing. However, if I could re reproduce such frivolous acts of power at will, then it would be hard to ignore the power in the name of Jesus Christ. And I suspect that everyone on earth would start praying in the name of Jesus within a week. But this clearly and evidently is not how prayer works. Because to do something in the name of Jesus is not simply a matter of making certain sounds with our mouths as if it were a magic incantation. It involves the alignment of our requests with the person of Jesus Christ. And nowhere in the Gospels does it suggest that Jesus has any interest in turning lecterns like this one into Labrador puppies. So my request, while verbally claiming to be in the name of Jesus, does not align with the purpose of Jesus Christ as revealed to us in the Gospels. In this sense, prayer, then, is more about alignment than request. On the one hand, if our will is aligned with Jesus Christ, then what we ask will be in his name. On the other hand, if what we ask is not aligned with Jesus Christ, then our request has no guarantee. In other words, God will do what God wills. And if we ask for what God wills, then we will receive it. Now this is unapologetically circular reasoning and it fails to prove anything about the efficacy of prayer. But proving that prayer works has never been what Jesus intended. So any attempt to defend prayer on the grounds of its efficacy is already misaligned with the person of Jesus. It was Jesus, after all, who tells us to enter our closets and close the door and pray in secret so that no one sees us in Matthew chapter six. Jesus has no interest in turning prayer into a weapon to be deployed in our culture wars. And so returning to the purpose of prayer, it seems to be as much about learning God's will as it is about sharing our own will. But that doesn't mean that we shouldn't ask what we desire. On the contrary, when we are truly honest about our own desires with God in prayer, then we are able to see more clearly when our desires don't line up with God's will. For example, I have been praying fervently every day for a vaccine for COVID-19 to arrive, and it has not yet happened. 
If we accept Jesus' promise at face value, then we might agree that it is not yet God's will for a vaccine to arrive. But this does not mean that we can conclude that God is indifferent to our struggle. But it might suggest that his will is being worked out in ways that are different than my own. Now, I have also been praying for patience, a virtue with which I struggle. And against my own will, God is providing me with daily opportunities to grow in patience in the midst of this pandemic. I have been forced to slow down, to stop planning because it has become impossible. And this is not something that is easy for me to do. In spite of myself, it might be accurate to say that Jesus has answered my prayer and provided me with opportunities to grow in patience. Prayer, then, is our conversation with God, in which we come to know the nature of our own desires and come to learn something of God's will in the world. When what we ask for in Jesus' name is fulfilled, we learn something of God's will, not perfectly or completely, to be certain, but we are pointed in the right direction. Over time, we begin to feel the contours of God's will in our lives, and our prayers get closer and closer to the substance of Jesus. When our wills are closely aligned with Jesus through prayer, our prayers become powerful and effective, as James describes it in his epistle. Not because we are powerful, but because God's will is perfect. And we have learned what it means to pray in Jesus' name. Not just with words, but in substance. This is an uncertain time for all of us. And prayer is one of the greatest tools we have in the face of uncertainty, which is why I wanted to focus on this section of the Gospel lesson tonight. Because prayer allows us to look with honesty at the nature of our desires and it invites us to refine our desires so that they might begin to align with God's will. And so many of our desires are irrelevant to what Jesus desires in the Gospels. For example, I am not sure that God cares at all who is a prefect and who is not a prefect at Woodbury Forest School in Virginia. And this is good news, because the ineffectiveness of our prayers regarding worldly things like accolades suggests that they are not central to God's will in our lives. They do not hold ultimate value even though we sometimes give them ultimate value in the desires of our own hearts. So if you are a boy who was not selected to be a prefect this week, or if you were a boy who did not receive admission to your desired college, or if you were a boy who has not yet found a roommate for next year, you might take comfort to know that these worldly failures are insignificant in God's eyes. Instead, Scripture exhorts us to keep praying, to keep learning, to keep aspiring to what matters most, so that we might be surprised to learn that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us, and that it is true whether or not we are a prefect, or whether or not we get a graduation ceremony on time or not. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please bow your heads and join with me in prayer. Lord, we ask your prayers for our community and world in these times of uncertainty and distress. We pray for all God's people throughout the world, for this virtual gathering, and for your love and support. We ask your prayers for all those who are ill, afraid, or in isolation. We pray for all those who are sick, Grant them strength, consolation, and hope. Give skill, sympathy, and resilience to all who are caring for the sick and your wisdom to all those searching for a cure. Help us to remember that we are your people, God, people of courage and generosity who protect our neighbor, giving and loving wherever we are, 
for as long as it takes. I ask your prayers for those connected to the community. Lorna Jordan, sister of Dr. Jordan, who has finished radiation treatment for cancer, but is still in considerable discomfort. Donna Gravely, who is fighting ovarian cancer. Rosanna Couture, in her final weeks of pregnancy. I also offer a prayer of thanksgiving for the Joneses' baby, Avery Diana Jones, born May 5th. Grant her a blessed life. In your name we pray, amen. I now invite you to say the Lord's Prayer with me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.